So, Brad, I want to thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you, Mark, for videotaping this, and Alex for helping with the setup. Um, and as always, we welcome all the love and light that everybody brings into these collective circles together. So, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he always gets great announcements, and I have some too. <laughs> but that's okay. Everyone have your rose quartz and uh, and gold related. That's excellent. So those are gifts to you. Uh, frequency and vibration are so essential for uh, consciousness, but also for our, our health and well-being. And we have we just gone through a year of oppressive of energies of, of fear and, and isolation. And I don't want to sound cliche, but love is the most powerful force in the universe. Uh, I am a universal white time healing uh, practitioner and teacher, and what we do is we work with the forces of divine love and, and unconditional love and, and time. And as I, I practice, I, I, I become familiar with the actual the force of love, and it just it's it's more powerful than light. But love and light together, they just they, they just gently move away uh, move away the darkness, the fear. Because darkness and fear are, they're allowed to exist. This is, a, this is a dualistic universe. And in order to reach a harmony, we have to accept that darkness and fear exist. And darkness and fear exist within us. And darkness and fear, kind of, they kind of decided to, to put everyone in a crazy situation last year. Uh, which it forced people to, to find resources uh, to survive. Uh, some of us uh, thrive in the internal world. And I, I spend so much time clearing and, and raising my vibration. Uh, I feel like I, I need to help spread that energy out. So these crystals that you're going to have, that you're working with tonight, you're going to take home. This rose quartz is just a, such a beautiful physical representation of the vibration of love. And gold related quartz, it's about restructuring and structuring something divine and something sacred and something truthful. So as you go out after tonight, I want you... To, to know that the frequencies are in you and the frequencies are in those stones and that you carry the frequencies and the frequencies of love and light and higher vibrations, they overpower those of fear and anger and separation. And you don't need to, to engage, you don't need to confront, you don't need to react, you just need to be and to embody that, that love and that light. And these crystals are a reminder for you to have with you. So bring them to any other events, charge them, make them personal. Hold one in each hand, put one on your heart, your thymus, your third eye, or crown chakra, whatever you do, they're my gift to you. Um, my guide said, give crystals away. I said, okay. So, uh, a couple things that are coming up. Uh, yes, I have got another uh, another concert here in May. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I kind of cheat. I don't cheat on you, but I do perform <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> and I, I, I will cheat you in that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I choose to, I, I, I advertise in uh, Natural Awakenings and also Epic Magazine. This is a really great new magazine. Uh, I'm personal friends with both the Cole Publishers, and uh, I've got my events listed in here and my services, so please support this. They're free. You should find one. Uh, I am going to be at uh, a couple other places. I'm not going to mention them here, just out of respect for Ron, but you know I have other opportunities. Uh, and a big thing that's coming up is the Level 1 Universal White Time Energy Healing Certification course. I know it's last minute, but it's next weekend. And those courses are so powerful. It, uh, most people that gravitate to these courses are uh, advanced energy practitioners who already have a modality that they're working with, or people with very unique latent healing abilities that the, 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 the master guides of Universal White Time, essentially they, they really pick and choose who they want to work with. They chose me because of the, my background in sound, and they also chose me because of my past incarnations as a crystal, a crystal master. So when I took my first class, all these blockages were removed and all this information came in, and it was like a review course for me. And that was about four, 16 years ago, and it completely changed my life. So I'm very honored and humbled to be able to teach that, to offer that to people who are ready to take the next step. If you're interested in that, uh, let me know, talk to me afterwards. Uh, it's at a center in Higginum, uh, Connecticut, and it's next weekend, and uh, my guides wanted me to create a, uh, a rotation of all the certification classes that I teach. So I did my best to teach each class twice a year. So this particular class is going to be offered again in the fall, uh, but the level two class is going to be offered this, this summer. And anyway, anyway, you'll, 
I'm, this is the year. This is the year for me. So, um, and so that's that. If you could sign up my, my newsletter, it's also a paid service that I'm actually starting to use. And um, I just got this new keyboard. And it's fabulous. My old one was named Clarice, and this is Clarice 2. It's not very original. But now I, it's a, a nod to both Silence of the Lambs and Little Shop of Horrors. So, um, <laughs> and, um, but so going back to, to personally, I'm really, really focusing on um, uh, raising vibrations and raising consciousness. And uh, part of that is I, I started intermittent fasting, which is very easy to do. You just skip breakfast. And it's the, the health benefits are amazing. And I realized my father has a very high metabolism. He was never overweight, no health problems. He would never eat breakfast. And I realized that was just his lifestyle. And no one said it to do it because it was a fad. It was just what he did. So I started doing that in October. And then I started uh, juice, juicing as well. So I would break my intermittent fast with organic vegetable juice that I've done daily since October. And it might not mean much to you, but I, I'm really excited to be playing these pieces for you tonight. But some of these pieces, one of them I'm going to start with, I wrote when I was 15 years old, and I still I still have the challenges with accuracy for performing it, because they're not easy. And what I've noticed since October is those little places, those little areas where you cut corners, where you say, like, oh, it's okay, but it's not good, you know, that's that. They're, they're starting to clear up, and I'm becoming fully conscious while I, while I play the piano. No more muscle memory, no more you know, blind faith that I'll hit something. Everything is becoming present and in the moment. And I'm finding that with the intermittent fasting and meditating and, and healing work and, and the juicing, everything is becoming conscious and I'm responding instead of reacting and, and being able to hold these energies of love and light because it's not easy and it's going to get harder. There is, there's so much, to, um, there's so much, I don't even know what to call it, just like so many forces trying to pull us apart and, and put us on different sides of something. And that is completely opposite of where we need to be going. You know, we are literally shifting into the age of Aquarius, where the idea is, is unification through individuality. And the only way we're going to unite is if we're 100% completely individual and accept everyone else for who they are. And what we're doing is we're seeing the last vestiges of the Piscean age, which is the martyr syndrome, the savior, you know, and all of the, those two fish with that tension, right? That So it's funny, but... It's like that, it's breaking apart and it's trying to grasp and hold on. So the, the answer to that is to just not participate. Step back and hold love. And that's really my intention for this is to clear and cleanse and, and renew and get all of that junk out that you absorb from other people. That's not really who you are or what, how you want to be and what you want to express. So that's my story. And... Lay down, sit down, do whatever. Guess everyone's alert. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> and uh, all right, so this uh, I mix, I gotta get some energy out. All right, here we go. This is the that piece I wrote when I was fifteen. It's called My Nameless Love, and it's a good piece to match everyone's energies here and settle in. And whether or not I talk about the other pieces, we'll see when we get there. And if this is is this your first anyone's first time, really thank you so much. You're in for a fabulous, I hope, treat. Um, a couple times people have left because they, 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 it wasn't what they were looking for. I won't take offense. Just be polite and leave if it's not your cup of tea. People who've come here, they know that this is pretty intense sound healing. <laughs> and, and that's what I'm about. My, you know, my whole idea is to educate, to inspire, and to activate people. And activate, you know, it's when you're ready, it, it can come. And, and I've called in all of the, the, the forces that I work with before you guys came. I structured the energy of the space using uh, some advanced uh, techniques in white time called the boards of knowledge and the angel boards. Got angels and sending symbols to everyone who came here. So really open up and, and set a really positive intention for yourself. And, and that's, that's that. It's about an hour and a half.
Everyone's good? Yeah, the mats. Yeah. Everyone's good? Yeah. I know. So, um, thank you. Yeah. Have a pause, I'll chase no, the away. Right uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote that when I was 15. And wow. Anyway, it's, a, it's all right, story time. Um, when I first moved to San Francisco, one of the first things I did was buy a, a used keyboard. His name is Maurice. And I, I was very proactive at that time. I was a young musician. I had a massage certificate. And, you know, and I contacted a, an open mic. And it was at a bookstore in Alameda. A uh, nice lesbian couple owned it. And I went over there and I performed. And it was funny because I had this pedal and it was a wood floor. And uh, I played that piece. And the first piece, and I was nervous. I had a lot of performance anxiety when I was younger because I was a classically trained pianist and I was in competitions and God forbid I hit a wrong note. And uh, I had to break out of that and the sound healing with the bowls really helped to uh, free me of that. And so I'm playing that piece and the pedal started moving on the floor. It kept getting farther and farther and farther away from me. And I kept sweating and sweating and sweating. And, and I, finally I said, I, I, I cracked this and I got stopped. And everyone burst out laughing. And someone had some duct tape. They were lesbians. And <laughs> that was funny, guys. And um, I don't know if you're friends <laughs> And we taped it. And then, <laughs> and then the audience, after I played that piece, they gave me standing ovations. And um, ooh, I'm so emotional. I've been isolated for a long time. And so has everyone else. Um, and they said that was the first standing ovation that I had ever gotten. Wow. And uh, it, was, it meant a lot to me. And... Um, I played that pretty accurately now, so... Alright, moving on. This next piece is uh, one of my favorites. It's called In Chrysalis, and it, it usually played around this time of the year. It, uh, of course, the chrysalis is uh, the form that the larva becomes before it becomes the butterfly. And uh, it's a great piece. I'm not going to go into the music theory, but it, it's just, it tries to wiggle out. Does it get out? I don't
a piece that I was commissioned to write for uh, it was a memorial piece for uh, someone's wife who had passed away. And while I was composing the piece, her spirit came and uh, was uh, working with me. Actually, I felt a presence, and uh, it was really quite something. And I call this piece "Strength in Passing." And it's, it's an inspirational piece, and it can be very therapeutic for uh, someone um, uh, transitioning or, you know, if there's a hospice situation or, or someone you know, who's looking, um, you know, to, to transition. And also for people who are you know, trying to release someone and let go in a positive way. So uh, this is a strength in passing.
two more piano pieces today, but I'm feeling called to wait. Maybe so. Maybe maybe I'll come back to this. Stairs is called uh, Angelic Incarnation. And I recorded that CD uh, when I was living in Rinda, California, and I had just purchased a huge lot of the original Lemurian Dream Seed crystals, the ones with their sand still in them. And I also purchased a bunch of really nice green aqualite that my mom has included in some paper on my back at home for when we're on. And it's here tonight. And I, I set them all up. I had my bowls, and I had uh, my computer, and I had uh, microphones, and I had a big gong that I borrowed from a friend. And I just went into this vortex of, of composition and recording with all these crystals around me in the bowls. And it wasn't this bowl in particular, because that one has, has uh, since transitioned. Uh, it, was, it, was, it died. Uh, <laughs> it broke when I was at a wedding in a, a hacienda in Mexico. Um, I named it. Never name, never name your crystal bowls. And when it broke, I was like, oh. And I looked up and there was a shooting star on by. I'm like, yeah, there you go. But that that bowl, um, I was I was doing this, and this is how the CD starts. And and I felt for the first time uh, angelic frequencies coming in and 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 working through my 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 throat, my throat chakra, my my vocal cords. And it's channeling, but it's conscious channeling because I'm I, uh, it's not a different consciousness. And I'm fully present, and so these angelic frequencies they come down, and they they they. I, what I do is I structure them through a musical language most of the time that that gives some uh, contextual and structural uh, uh, meaning for people to assimilate better than if it's just pure tones of, of energy, and that's really kind of become the signature of my my work. That fused with a lot of uh, indigenous frequencies that that come through. And, and I just surrender to what's asked for in the moment. And so those of you who are familiar with my work know, know what to expect. And uh, th there's something very powerful about those pure tones, especially with the crystal bowls. Uh, and I'm always imbuing uh, intention and psychic uh, purpose and communication. And this is how a lot of uh, language and information is, is past codes are, are sonic frequencies, so to speak. And, and I only work with the highest and, and the, the most uh, loving and the divine forces of universe and I really am a conduit to bring them in, into the manifest and the physical through the sound. And so with that said, let's, let's delve in.
Experience soak in these really intense vibrations are still bouncing around inside of you, raising your fundamental tone, your vibration, and whatever else might have come up for you. If anyone would like to share, I'm always interested in hearing other people's experiences. For me, the, there was really a, a defiance at the beginning and a, and a celebration of. And there was a grieving period and also a strengthening that, that came through. And I, I kind of remember what was happening. <laughs> I remember it was pretty intense and lots of adjusting, frequency adjustments, uh, subtle things. Energies are really, really strong now and, and the slightest adjustment or, or changes, and I know for me, what's being asked is a certain level of, of impeccability when it comes to my thoughts and my, my actions really, really come from a place of love as, as often as possible, and when I'm not, just take a breath, step back, center, balance, and align, and move forward again. There, there's so much that we can be so many mixed messages and fake news and real news and this, that, and all the other thing. We must stay true to ourselves, align with our own energy, and find ways that work for us to clear other people's energies. Because it, it's, it, it just it accumulates like dust in the house. You know, you're never going to magically buy that Swiffer that, that takes all that dust away forever. It's just part of life. And when you accept that it's just part of life and you respond as opposed to react, things really open up for you. And when you allow yourself to express just your truth and your authenticity coming from a place of love and knowing that, it's it, just the courage to do that. It's really what I want to see everyone. I invite you to be courageous in your own life. Start small. Start with yourself. That's the most difficult person to be honest with. Once you're honest with yourself and you accept your, your light and your dark and, and you synthesize it into an authentic expression powered by love, you can really transform your life. And in doing so, it transforms the lives of those around you. And our crystal friends are here to help. They are beautiful, powerful beings of, of light and, and, and geometry. And they, they, they'll definitely help to keep a higher vibration. And they, of course, need to be cleansed and loved as well. So I could talk forever. Um, thank you all for attending tonight. It's a real honor to share my, my music and my sound with you. And I hope you got something special, some experience, some, some benefit. So and, and thank you for watching on the live stream. Thank you, Mark, for videoing. And if anyone has an interesting idea or, or gift or talent they wish to share. Mark's looking for uh, more people to interview and to document. This is his passion to be able to bring uh, uh, our work out to, to, to awareness of the world. That's it. I'm here. I drink lots of water. And I, but my, my mailing list is up there. It's Jones University Heat. I'll put my mask on so I'm officially approaching.